What is going on ladies and gentlemen? Once again Michael or Legacy Kill HD back. It's been a while guys. I'm here for a new start and today we're going to start off with something big. A top 25 for the upcoming games for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. So today guys I'm going to be doing this a little different than last year. I'm going to try to give a brief description of each game. Just give you guys an idea of what there is to come. So let's get quickly into it. We're going to start here with the number 25 spot with Wild. It's an upcoming open world survival adventure game for the PS4. It's set during the Neolithic period, which is somewhere between the 6000 and 500 BC. It's in a gener generated world around the size of Europe. Smaller animals can be used to spy on others, whilst larger animals can be used to support the players and their tribes in fights with other humans. Animals can be controlled by using shamanic-like powers. It's a very interesting game. It looks different, which is what I like about video games. That's why I kind of have Wild on this list. I also kind of have a PS4 now. I got all three consoles. Well, I guess if you count PC as a console. But Wild seems a little different. I'm not sure exactly what to expect out of this, but it definitely has to be on my list. Now let's get to the number 24 spot, which is Kingdom Come Deliverance. It is an upcoming role-playing game for the PC, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4. As far as I've read, uh, it'll be coming for PC first and Xbox One and PlayStation 4 soon later. It's a single-player experience with branching quest lines and a highly interactive world encouraging emergent gameplay. Kingdom Come will feature period-accurate armor and clothing, combat techniques, and real-world castles recreated with the assistance of architects and historians. It is set in the medieval kingdom of Bohemia, an imperial state of the Holy Roman Empire with a focus of historically accurate and realistic content. This game has a lot of potential. I love the medieval genre, and what this game could bring would be a fun sword action type of deal. And I love the fact that this game is supported by history, and I love a game with a great story, and hopefully this game will deliver with that, because I love this genre, and I don't necessarily think that all these games need to have magic in them or other sorts of mystical creatures and so on. So I'm really looking forward to what this title can bring. Now let's get down to our number 23 spot, which is Homefront The Revolution. It's an upcoming f FPS for the PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Uh, the revolution takes place four years after the events of the original occupation, following protagonist Ethan Brady as he stages a resistance movement against the army of a Korean invasion in the city of Philadelphia. The biggest problem I have with this game is the way that the last one ended. I love the story of it, it just kind of just ended in San Francisco as you guys make your way through the bridge. It just ends, which I really didn't like. I like the story, and with the developer, fiasco that happened after THQ went down. I'm not really sure what to exactly e expect out of this title. The graphics didn't really look that great in the trailers, but I'm going to give it give it a shot. I mean, I love the I love the idea of this franchise. Hopefully, they'll be able to bring back the fans and deliver a great story and a great action-packed game. The multiplayer for the original was actually a very fun deal, so we'll have to see what this game brings. Now, let's move to our 22 spot, Watch Dogs 2. It will be an open-world action-adventure third-person shooter stealth video game. It's confirmed for release at the end of Ubisoft's 2017 fiscal year, which is between April 2016 and March 2017. Rumors suggest a holiday 2016 release to cover a year without Assassin's Creed. I mean, the big thing with Watch Dogs the original was it was a hyped up game that really didn't deliver too much on what it was trying to put out to be. I like the open world setting, I mean the character interactions, the, the story just really didn't touch me as well. Maybe that's just because I'm not too much of a fan of Ubisoft's uh, franchises they have, Far Cry, Assassin's Creed anymore at least. But uh, I'll give Watch Dogs again, like the other titles, a benefit of the doubt. I hope they learn from their mistakes and, I mean, without having Assassin's Creed, I hope it really does make up for what they missed in the first one. I mean, it had a lot of potential and it, I just feel like the story fell flat and the gameplay did too. Now let's move on to our 21 spot, Titanfall 2. Confirmed in March 2015 for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Respawn Entertainment will be back, and this time they'll have a traditional single-player campaign for their uh, sequel. It's said to have a huge E3 event this time around, kind of like the original one, but I hopefully they will learn from their original mistakes. I think the biggest one was that they didn't have an actual story and a single-player campaign, 
and you know I, I get that they tried integrating it into the multiplayer it just didn't work very well and a lot of people didn't care about it I remember playing the beta it was a really fun game and then when it came out it just kind of got dead nobody talked about it and people just moved on in ways it was revolutionary and hopefully they'll learn and hopefully this time around there'll be more buzz after it's actually released now let's move on to the 20 spot Scalebound which is an upcoming action role-playing video game for the Xbox One. It was delayed until 2017, but the players assume control of Drew, who is accompanied by a dragon called Thuban. Players can use a variety of weapons to defeat enemies and may issue commands to the dragon, which assists players during battles. Scalebound is an action role-playing video game, and it does feature a very visually stunning game, and I'm just not really sure exactly what to expect from the story, but with the visuals, it does look beautiful. But nowadays, I don't think necessarily you need to be bringing a beautiful game to the surface. You need to be bringing something that is complete. And hopefully that's what Scale Brown will bring after it's been delayed already. So let's move down to the 19 spot, Darksiders 3. Nordic Games bought the franchise after THQ went bankrupt. It was one of the many assets that were sold off to multiple different, fr different gaming companies. In February 2016, it was officially confirmed that Darksiders 3 was in the works, but no one knows when the release date is or what the story will focus on yet. Not much has been said. Uh, as we've already been through war, we've been through death, maybe they'll concentrate on strife and fury, or they'll just bring all four of them together and continue on with the story, or maybe they'll go backwards. Not exactly sure what they will bring, but hopefully the combat will be a lot better, a lot different than what we've seen. Anyway guys, let's move on to the number 18 spot, Horizon Zero Dawn, which is an upcoming action role-playing video game in development for the PS4. It's made by the Killzone developers and does look very interesting, uh, interesting combat with robot uh, dinosaurs running around. Uh, players take control of Aloy, uh, a hunter and archer, as she progresses through a post-apocalyptic land ruled by mechanized creatures, such as robotic dinosaurs, as I said, guys. Uh, this game is set 1,000 years in the future in which humanity has long abandoned Earth due to the world being dominated by robotic creatures. It's a very interesting idea, and I, that's what I like about video games. They bring an interesting idea and they bring a great story. Hopefully this is what this game will deliver. Now to the number 17 spot, NBA 2K17, which is obviously an upcoming basketball simulation set to be released sometime in September 2016 for Microsoft Windows, PlayStation 4, PS3, Xbox One, and Xbox 360. I'm hoping for a better, more interactive My Career Mode. I feel like this is one of the best sports franchises. Actually, I take that back. It probably is the best sports franchise that we have out there right now for any console, any game. I know people can say the same thing about MLB The Show, but I feel like the interactive story mode, and even you could say some of the other mo modes as franchise, it, it just gets better every single year. I really would love to see what visual concepts has set for us this year. Now let's move to the number 16 spot, Mass Effect 4 Andromeda. It's an upcoming action role-playing third-person shooter video game for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. It takes place a long after the original series, and I feel like in a way this is probably, you could say, it's a reboot. And I get that, I get that it's probably not going to have much talked about of the original franchise, but hopefully they do bring a lot of the pieces back together, what made this franchise great, and they deliver something different, and hopefully they make this into another franchise. I'm, I'm guessing they will, obviously. We'll probably get a Mass Effect 5, 6, or 1 coming after this. Now let's get to the number 15 spot, Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. This is a PC really only game. There's been rumors about it coming to Xbox One and PS4. This is more of a franchise that I've fallen in love with. It's a medieval sorts, there's no magic, there's nothing. It's just a fun sword action game, and it's a great strategy. The game is set 200 years before Mountain Blade Warband. It takes place during the decline of the Calradian Empire and the formation of the kingdoms that appear in the previous games. The Calradian Empire and its downfall are analogous to the Roman Empire's fall and the formation of the early European kingdoms. And it's just a really fun strategy game. And if you haven't played it, guys, you should give the original games to try it. To the 14 spot, Mirror's Edge Catalyst, which is an upcoming open world action adventure video game for the PC, PS4, and Xbox One. It's a reboot of the 2008 Mirror's Edge, and it revolves around Faith Connor's origins as she progresses through a futuristic city called Glast. Similar to the original Mirror's Edge, players traverse through the city using aspects of urban exploration and parkour movements to complete missions and evade enemies or knock them off of their feet. 
This uh, video game will be developed by DICE, and I've heard that not many of the developers that originally made the 2008 game will be back, but so far from all the gameplay and the video that I've seen from this, it actually looks really good. I mean, it definitely looks like a DICE game, but it does look like it has an intriguing story and a fun gameplay to come along with it, and it doesn't look like it relies on guns like most DICE games. So, I mean, DICE has had a lot of hits and misses, but hopefully this will be the one that tops it. Now let's get down to the 13th spot with Borderlands 3. It was confirmed in April 2016, but it's in very early stages. The studio Gearbox is currently working on Battleborn, so I don't think they'll be getting head-on with this project for a couple years or maybe a year from now. I believe that we'll be getting this definitely by 2017 or 2018. Um, I really hope that they take their time on this franchise, well this game period, because the original one, or the I mean, you could say Borderlands 2 won Game of the Year and it was a fun game, and I really do hope that Gearbox doesn't rush their way into this, and they take their time as I hope that the reason why they went with Battleborn was to take some time off and get their minds clear so they can come back to this franchise and deliver something amazing again. Now let's get down to the 12th spot with The Last Guardian. It is a PS4 exclusive. It's been in development for almost 10 years. It's a beautiful game. It involves a young boy who befriends a giant bird, dog, and cat hybrid creature, Traco, or what some people call it, a griffin, and the two work together to evade guards that are after them both. The Last Guardian, the only thing that really does scare me about this game is the fact that it's been in development for 10 years. There's been a lot of halts. It was originally supposed to come out for the PS3, I believe, in 2011. It got halted. A lot of uh, development problems. It's a beautifully stunning game. I, I just I get worried about this story and what's going to happen. I've heard rumors about the story and how it could end up bad. It could end up with a bad ending or sad ending, I should say. So we'll have to see. Hopefully that the development means nothing. I've seen in movies, I've seen in video games that sometimes it really does mean something. It means that it's a game that's been completely messed up and they've been trying to put pieces back together and hopefully that's not the case with this. Now let's get down to the 11th spot with Mafia 3. It's an upcoming action-adventure video game for the PS4, Xbox One, and PC. This time around, it's set in 1968 in the city of New Bordeaux, which is just New Orleans. The story revolves around Lincoln Clay, an orphan and a Vietnam War veteran who is on a quest to build a new crime organization to confront the Italian mob, which kills the whole black mob which he was a part of. Clay is saved by a priest and attempts to start his own criminal organization to get revenge. Clay is aided by three allies, which include Cassandra, Burke, and Vito Scaletta, who, if you guys are into this franchise, you would know he's the main character of Mafia 2. And hopefully this time around we figure out what the heck happened at the ending of Mafia 2. Deep down, I wish we could explore this universe a little bit more, just if it was more of an open world type of game. But I understand that this game progresses and they go through months, years, and so on with it. And I just hope the story does deliver like the other two have. So anyway guys, let's get down to the 10 spot with Dishonored 2, which is an upcoming single player action adventure stealth role playing video game for the PS4, Xbox One, and PC. And this time around it's going to be 15 years after the Dunwall Plague. The Empire begins to plunge into chaos after Empress Emily Caldwin is suddenly dethroned and she becomes an outlaw to society. Determined to claim it back, Emily follows the steps of her royal protector, obviously the uh, protagonist of the first one, Corvo Atano, in becoming an assassin. Armed with the Outsider's Mark, she intends to reclaim her title and restore power to what she has been lost. It's going to be an interesting game this time because, you know, the, the original one, it just followed Corvo, and I guess this time around, what I've heard is that it will be playable to play as Corvo or, and Emily. So we'll have to see exactly what this game brings, what they'll add on. I had a couple problems with the original. I thought it was a great story. I just, I don't think I really enjoyed the fact that this game is really built on stealth and it really just can screw you completely if you don't abide by that. The game is, decides that you have to play one way and if you don't, then you're pretty much screwed in a lot of senses. Now let's get down to the number nine spot which is Gears of War 4, which is an upcoming third-person shooter video game for Xbox One. It takes place 25 years after the Emulsion countermeasure weapon destroyed the Locust, Lambent, and Emulsion on the planet Sarah. Unfortunately, fossil fuels were lost, which caused survival to change. Only hundreds of thousands of humans are left. The new game focuses on JD Phoenix, the son of Marcus, as he battles a new threat to humanity's survival. And obviously this time it's going to be changing the developers to the Coalition, and I... I don't know exactly how I feel about Gears of War moving on. I get that Judgment came out and that was supposed to supposedly supposed to be the final one and they moved on with the franchise. I kind of felt like the third game, Gears of War 3, just kind of was a definitive end ending. 
And um, this time around, the graphics didn't look exactly too great, at least at the showings that they've been going so far. So this is a game that we'll have to wait out so far. I just hope they're not making it to make it, which in a lot of senses, that's what it feels like right now. But anyway, guys, let's move down to the number eight spot, Uncharted 4 which is an upcoming action-adventure third-person shooter platform video game for the PS4. It's set several years after the events of Uncharted 3 Drake's Deception with Nathan Drake, now retired as a fortune hunter, settled into a normal life with his wife, Alina Fisher. His world is then turned upside down when his older brother, Sam, long believed to be dead, suddenly reappears seeking Drake's help. Together, they embark on a globe-trotting journey in pursuit of a conspiracy behind Libertalia, a long-lost pirate colony, and his fabled pooled pirate treasure. Naughty Dog is one of those studios that whenever they deliver anything it just feels like it's golden and this time around I hope that this is the best way they can go out with the Nathan Drake character and they leave this franchise on top. Now let's get to the number seven spot No Man's Sky which is an upcoming adventure survival video game for the PS4 and PC. As potential to redefine the video game genre, No Man's Sky's gameplay is built on four pillars exploration, survival, combat, and trading. The thing about No Man's Sky is it just looks amazing. It looks fabulous. I'm glad I got a PS4, and I have a PC, obviously, capable definitely of playing this. But I just, when I hear that there's quadrillions of planets that you can explore, that's fun and all, but it has to have a good story, and it has to actually come together. I mean, I get that we can go planet to planet, but there has to be a goal in mind for this game. Here at the number 6 spot we have The Walking Dead Season 3, which is the next season of the episodic, interactive, drama graphic adventure video game, which is pretty much released for just about everything, PC, Xbox One, Xbox 360, PS4, PS3, iOS, and Android. This season will take place a few years after the sec second season, and will include a somewhat older Clementine, though uh, the executive producer, obviously, Kirkman, did not confirm if she will be the playable character. As all we know so far is that it will be released sometime in later 2016 and honestly I hope they go differently this time. I hope they actually don't go with Clementine. I felt like season 2 wasn't as fun just because of the fact that she's so young and the story suffered a little bit because of that. I still think it was a lot of fun and I'm glad that they brought some of the other characters from season 1 into it. Now let's get down to the number 5 spot which is Left 4 Dead 3 which is rumored to be coming in 2017 following Four new survivors, Catherine Gangster Irvin, comic book nerd Keenan, and famous Kenpo fighter Garrett Jr. Also, six separate campaigns to play in Left 4 Dead 3 have been rumored, including No Mercy, Cliffhanger, Early Destination, Crashland Impasse, and Inquisitor Land. This rumor is just a rumor, as it's been said, but there has been a lot of talk about Left 4 Dead 3 and, honestly, just some of Vault's projects, uh, such as Half-Life and even uh, Team Fortress. I'm not exactly sure what we'll be getting from them, but I'm sure Vol has something in store for us, maybe even a Portal 3. I think sooner than later we'll find out finally what Valve has in store. Maybe even at E3 we'll get some confirmation of some of their projects. We haven't heard much out of them. I mean, there's been rumors, there's been leaks, that's all we've heard so far. We've never, well, we haven't actually had any confirmation from Valve themselves. So we'll have to see if they actually are going to be delivering anything for us at all. But I think. I think that they got a big E3 or something coming up soon. Now let's get to the number 4 spot, The Last of Us 2. Not much is known so far, it's in the early stages as Naughty Dog is working on Uncharted 4 and I'm sure they're going to be working on some DLC for Nathan Drake as this is his last exploration. But uh, the brainstorming ideas of a story with new ca characters has been talked about. But uh, they are looking at ideas with Joel and Ellie. There was talk earlier that they were going to go a different path with new characters, but I just don't think you can do that with the characters that they established. And I hope that Naughty Dog takes their time with this franchise because it, it's going to be their next centerpiece as they're moving on from Uncharted. And hopefully they don't make any mistakes with that, and I hope they just take their time because the thing that made the original game just so much fun was the fact that the, the character development, the story, it just all came together, everything worked and I just feel like nothing was forced on us. Now let's get to the number three spot, which is Red Dead Redemption 2. Throughout the last months, and even you could say years, there's been many leaks, many rumors about what Rockstar will be working on next past GTA 5. There's been rumors of a Red Dead sequel, there's been rumors of LA Noir, Bully, but now there has been the first confirmation, at least through sources, which is that this in-game map still that has been floating around that shows the game will be a prequel, which you kind of have to do if it's going to be in the West, the Wild West, I guess you could say. 
The ability to swim in the game will be much larger, larger compared to Red Dead Redemption is what's been revealed through this map. But I'm expecting that E3 2016 Rockstar has something major for us and honestly I'm just ready to dive back into another Rockstar game. It's been a while guys. Now let's get down to the numbers who spot, which this is a little bit of a far fetch because of the release with Fallout Elder Scrolls 6. There's been a lot of people discussing what right now Bethesda Game Studio is working on or are planning to be. They have said that they're working on three major projects. Uh, Todd Howard and some of the other executives over there, Pete Hines, have talked about that some of these projects are far fetched in the future. But if Elder Scrolls 6 is in production, it's probably in the early stages. They've recently opened a studio in Montreal. There's been rumors of this next setting being in Argonia. And I'm not exactly sure what to expect out of Elder Scrolls 6, but I really hope that Vesta does take their time, and maybe we'll get it a little bit later. But I hope, I'm hoping that we'll get it sometime in 2018, probably a later time in 2018. I mean, the release dates match up a little bit, but when you think about it, the fact that Fallout 4 is coming out in 2015, well, it did come out in 2015 in October. Maybe it does line up three years later. I mean, we'll have to see what progresses. I mean, their studio is getting bigger, and I know that they like to take time on their projects. But uh, I really hope that this time around, maybe it's not necessarily in Argonia. I don't care for the setting too much. I mean, I get that they're going all over the provinces, but they have a lot to work with. They could honestly just go on to a new continent, and maybe it's something to do with us going to Tamriel, and maybe this is going to be the biggest Elder Scrolls game that we have. Not much is said, but we'll have to see what Vesta Game Studio does has for us in the future. Now let's get down to that number one spot, guys, from one of my favorite developers, Cyberpunk 2077. The next project from CD Projekt Red is a planned action role-playing video game from the developers of The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. And the game aims to be, the, be mature and ambitious with character customization being strongly tied to the plot. Planned features include a non-linear story with the different character classes as well as both first person and third person perspectives. Cyberpunk 2077 will feature a dystopian futuristic world in which ultra modern technology coexists with a degenerated human society. There have been some wild reports out there stating that we'll be getting this game sometime in late 2016, but the more realistic idea is that we're going to be getting this probably in 2017 or 2018, as a lot of studio heads and a lot of developers have said that they're in early production right now, as I'm guessing a lot of their studio probably is still working on The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt DLC Blood and Wine right now. Based on how amazing of a presentation that they delivered at E3, and the fact that they delivered probably one of the greatest games of all time with The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, I hope that everybody watches out for the next game that CD Projekt Red will be delivering. This is an interesting concept going in the future as a lot of games have and a lot of games have failed, but it just looks a lot different, and I hope that this game has a great story and it has hours and hours of fun just like The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Take it from me, you're never gonna be short of high quality content. This channel is awesome. Subscribe now for a free raccoon. Legit, no scam, we're not Nigerian scammers. So what are you waiting for? Get your free raccoon today by subscribing.